Good morning and welcome to my home. My name is the Reverend Matthew Renyard. I'm a curate here serving the parish of Radipole and Malcolm Regis in Weymouth on the south coast of England. And welcome to our service of morning prayer. I pray that whoever you are or wherever you might be, that you are well and you are safe this morning. And that as we gather to worship an almighty God, that we remember that God loves us and cares for us deeply. So let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day that you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin for all. In living, he lives for to God. See yourselves therefore as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall be all be made alive. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 105. O oh, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises and tell of all his marvellous works. Rejoice in the praise of his holy name. Let the hearts of them rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise that he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac, which he established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, To you will I give the land of Canaan, to be the portion of your inheritance when they were but few in number, a little of count, and to join us in the land, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people. He suffered no one to do them wrong. He rebuked even kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Then he called down famine over the land, and broke every staff of bread. But he sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave, then shackled his feet with fetters, 
His neck was ringed with iron until all he foretold came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of people sent him free. He appointed him lord of his household and rulers of all he possessed to instruct his princes as he willed, to teach his counsellors wisdom. Then Israel came into Egypt, Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham, and the Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them too many for their adversaries, whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt craftily with his servants. Then he sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. He showed his signs through their word and his wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and it grew dark, yet they did not heed his words. He turned their waters into blood and slew all their fish. Their land swarmed with frogs even in their king's chambers. He spoke the word and there came clouds of flies, swarms of gnats within all their borders. He gave them hailstones for rain and flames of lightning in their land. He blasted their vines and their fig trees and shattered trees across their country. He spoke the word and the grasshoppers came and young locusts within number. They ate every plant in their land and devoured the fruit of their soil. He smote all the firstborn in their land, the first fruits of all their strength. Then he brought them out with silver and gold. There was not one among their tribes that stumbled. Egypt was glad at their departing, for a dread of them had fallen upon them. He spread out a cloud for a covering, and a fire to light up the night. They asked him, and he brought them quails. He satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and the waters gushed out, and ran into the dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy word, and Abraham his servant. So he brought forth his people with joy, his chosen ones with singing. He gave them the lands of the nations, and they took possession of their fruit of their toil, that they might keep his statutes and faithfully observe his laws. Alleluia. God of our earthly pilgrimage, feed your Easter people with the bread of heaven that we may hunger and thirst for righteousness until we reach our promised land through Jesus Christ our Lord. And glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. This reading is Exodus 24. The covenant confirmed. Then he said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel. You are to worship at a distance, but Moses alone is to approach the Lord, and others must not come near, and the people may not come with, with him. When Moses went and told the people all the Lord's words and laws, they responded with one voice, everything the Lord has said, we will do. Moses then wrote down everything the Lord had said. He was up early the next morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up 12 stone pillars representing the 12 tribes of Israel. Then he sent young Israelite men and they offered burnt offerings and sacrificed young bulls as fellowship offerings to the Lord. Moses took half the blood and put it in bowls, and the other half he sprinkled on the altar. Then he took the Book of the Covenant and read it to the people. They responded, We will do everything the Lord has said. We will obey. Moses then took the blood, sprinkled it on the people and said, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu and the 70 elders of Israel went up and saw the God of Israel. Under his feet was something like a pavement made of sapphire, 
clear as the sky itself. But God did not raise his hand against these leaders of the Israelites. They saw God and they ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and stay here, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and commands I have written for their instruction. Then Moses set out with Joshua, his assistant, and Moses went up on the mountain with God. He said to the elders, Wait here for us until we come back to you. Aaron and Hur are with you, and anyone involved in a dispute can go to them. When Moses went up on the mountain, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord settled on the Mount Sinai. For six days the cloud covered the mountain, and on the seventh day the Lord called to Moses from within the cloud. To the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on top of the mountain. Then Moses entered the cloud as he went up the mountain, and he stayed on the mountain forty days and forty nights. The Canticle In your unfailing love, O Lord, you led the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia! I will sing to the Lord, who have triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you led the people whom you have redeemed. And by your invincible strength you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you led the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. This reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 56. Mary visits Elizabeth. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said will be accomplished. And Mary said, My soul does magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he has regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty has done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance, in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months 
and then returned home. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung upon the tree. Alleluia. We just get to that point of our morning prayer, where we offer our petitions to an almighty and loving God. As we pray, I'll say, Lord, hear us. And please, if you are able to, would you respond with, Lord, graciously hear us. So let us pray to God, who alone makes us dwell in safety. For all who are affected by coronavirus, through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies, that they make wise decisions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For doctors, nurses and medical researchers, that through their skill and insight many will be restored to health. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the vulnerable and the fearful, for the gravely ill and dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and for all whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Well, thank you for joining me for another service of morning prayer. I pray that the words today will bless you and keep you. I pray that you stay safe and stay well. 
And I pray that whoever you are or wherever you might be, that you have a good day. If you're new here today, thank you for stopping by. Please say hello in the comments section below. It'd be lovely to connect with you. So have a great day, take care, and God bless.